Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Which are more important, dashas or transits? Mm -hmm, interesting. Always I get this question. This dasha has changed, but I have this transit. Okay, I have this transit, but I have this dasha. What will happen? So, for example, if you have the dasha of the 10th house, which means you have a planet in the 10th and that planet's Mahadasha or Antardasha is running or uh, you are running the Mahadasha, Antardasha of the 10th Lord and you have uh, a bad transit. Bad transit means, you know, you have like three, four planets transiting the 12th house. So does it mean it will be good for you in your profession or will it be bad because uh, the 10th house dasha should be good, right? And the 12th house transit should be bad, right? So so does it mean uh, it will be a mixture of good and bad? So will it uh, cancel out? Will it nullify each other? Well, what is it? What is it? Which is more important? Does one has more authority over the other? Uh, so can we completely ignore and neglect either one of them you know so these are questions which we are going to discuss today all right so if you're new and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to the channel and if you like this video please hit the thumbs up after watching till the end of course <laughs> god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will surely find him and if you want a consultation from me my website is down in the description section all right so what are the shahs the shahs are like time periods okay so they decide where your life is heading so we have the nine planets they indicate certain things you know and and by the way there's a disclaimer uh, in this video if you feel what i'm going to speak is going over your head or it's too confusing then uh, maybe you need to watch my astrology basics playlist okay that that will give you more clearance okay and please watch the example charts okay now Coming back to what dashas are. So dashas are like, uh, see, we have nine plants, you know, and they are always there. So they are sitting in some houses. They are, you know, conjunct with somebody. They are aspecting somewhere. You know, they are doing something in the horoscope. And they ultimately define who we are. The combination of all the nine planets define who we are. So people keep asking, you know, who am I? Am I sun sign, moon sign, ascendant sign? No, you are not uh, just these three. You are a mixture of all the nine uh, planets. So we are a combination of all the 12 houses and the nine planets and our divisional charts, of course, right? The D9, D10 uh, and all this. Uh, but... Does that mean we are always focusing on the same thing in our life? Uh, well, uh, absolutely not. Now, of course, there are certain things which people uh, focus by default as a matter of uh, society, you know, as per age, you know, like initially five years, the kid is not doing much, you know, education and all this. And then after three, four, uh, like four or five years, the, kid, the big boy or girl is serious with studies and then till 18 there are studies and then around 18 they go for bachelors and you know then job then marriage then by 30 and then you know childbirth uh, car purchase home purchase you know by 35 40 so these are some standard uh, trajectories of human beings but even within them uh, there, there there are people who are focusing on different things okay so Individual is one, which is the combination of the entire chart. But the dashas will tell you what is this person focusing on at the moment. Now, I'm very careful when I say focusing. I'm not saying dashas represent those things which you want to focus in. It can also represent things that you have to focus in inevitably. <laughs> Which means a dasha can indicate certain things have come up in your life and you you, you need to pay attention to that. Now, <clears throat> you may like it or you may not like it. That 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 uh, is not important or I would say that doesn't matter. <laughs> you want it or not, it, it's there. You, you need to deal with it, okay? <clears throat> so, when a dasha is changing, it means your direction in life is changing. Your focus is changing. You may focus from one area to the other area or your focus within one area may increase or decrease. Okay, The area may be same, but it may increase or decrease. So for example, if your dasha is indicating the sixth house 
and now your new dasha is indicating the 10th house then your focus in career will increase on the other hand if your dasha is indicating 10th house now and the next dasha indicates you know <clears throat> in the second house sixth house fifth house ninth house all these houses then your focus in the profession will reduce considerably okay so the dasha is actually giving direction focus inevitable circumstances okay and the dashas as you know is decided by our birth okay so depending on your moon nakshatra which is where your moon is your dasha will start so if your uh, moon is for example in ashwini nakshatra for example then you are born in ketu dasha because ketu is ruled by Ash uh, ashwini is ruled by ketu right and then you have venus mahadasha then sun then moon then mars then rahu and, and so on right jupiter saturn mercury like this <coughs> But then we have transits, you know, uh, what are transits? And before I go to transits, you know, we have different dasha systems, you know, there's Vimshotri dasha, there is Chara dasha, there is Narayan dasha, you know, so you need to be aware of all this. And within that, there is like Mahadasha, Antar dasha, Pratyantar, you know, there's Sukshma dasha and all this also. But gen in general, uh, astrologers give more importance to the Mahadasha and the Antar dasha <clears throat> because Mahadasha is like major period. So like, Venus Mahadasha, you know, like uh, 20 years. Then you have Venus Saturn Antar Dasha, you know, three, three and a half years around that time. <clears throat> so uh, why? Because uh, these, these periods actually, you know, so it's like the Mahadasha is there first. You know, the Mahadasha is like the major period. Mahadasha gives you the status and primary thought process. You know, Mahadasha is like your thought process you know what, what, what are you what is your uh, thought like you know do you think you should be a millionaire or you should do a normal job or you know you should just continue with life as it is or you want to become a billionaire what is your thought process you know what is your obsession that that is seen from the mahadasha <clears throat> then we have the antardasha the antardasha will uh, tell actually where you are focusing temporarily within that Mahadasha and what is the extent of your focus, okay? So, for example, if you have two planets, you know, let's assume you have Saturn and Venus in your 10th house, for example, I'm saying, so you are running Venus Mahadasha. So, now within Venus Mahadasha, when you run Saturn Antardasha, because Saturn is also in the 10th house, so your focus in profession will increase multifold. You will be like, I need to make money, I need to uh, become famous and all. So, the Antardasha will give major ups and downs, okay? Major expenditure, you know, promotions, jobs. So, from a perspective of events, you need to check Antardasha. So, now, <clears throat> Mahadasha is like uh, the brand of a car. Okay, so you you decide, you know, you want to uh, buy a Maruti or a Honda or a Skoda or a... Um, Mercedes or a Rolls Royce or a Lamborghini, right? Then Antardasha is like the model of the car, okay? So if you want to take Maruti, which model you want to take? You know, you want to take Mercedes, which model is it? You know, if you want to take a Rolls Royce, which model is it? Okay. And then the Pratyantar represents, you know, the amenities inside. You want a music system, which is, you know, average, which is very nice. You want this feature, that feature, you know, all this. <clears throat> So, the Mahadasha will decide the grand theme of your life, okay? Which means if you want to, uh, you know, it's like you are going in a Rolls Royce or a Lamborghini. It's like the grand theme of your life. And it may happen that uh, within, within the Rolls Royce or Mercedes, you are having the base model of the car. That is also possible. But even then, it's Mercedes or it's Rolls Royce, right? It will never become uh, Honda or Maruti or uh, Toyota. Or something. It, it, Mercedes will always be Mercedes, right? <clears throat> of course, you can compare the best model of Honda and the worst model of Mercedes. Which one is better? You can go on doing all these comparisons. But uh, the company is the company, right? And then there are accessories, you know. <clears throat> so... This is how you can understand, okay? So, Mahadasha is like the grand um, consciousness, you know, it's like uh, the mind, okay? And, or you could say Mahadasha is even the intelligence and the Antardasha is the mind, where is the mind focusing and Pratyantar is like the body, okay? <clears throat> so, they primarily decide what is going to happen in our life, when? 
okay primarily they decide what is going to happen so for example if you have if you are above 25 and you are having reasonable uh, stability in your career and now you want to marry so then after 25 26 when you have the mahadasha of our planet which is sitting in the second seventh or eleventh or within the mahadasha you have antardasha which is also sitting in the second seventh eleventh <clears throat> or signifying that you know by planetary lordships uh, placement you know or by nakshatra again um, you need to watch other basic videos to understand this okay if you are feeling confused so if you have that then suppose around 29 years of age you know uh, you have so let, let's assume you have mars mahadasha mars is in third house you know third house is neutral it doesn't say yes to marriage neither does it say no to marriage and then you get um, rahu antardasha which is sitting in the second house around the age of 28 29 so maybe that year you can get married you know it, it is possible uh, depending on other planets <clears throat> so now you know that this Mars Rahu Dasha, you know, this long Dasha, you know, I might get married. There's a possibility, there's a probability. Now, what do you do is you need to check the transits. Yeah, this is where you use transits. So, for example, now you have an Antar Dasha which is indicating the second house. Now, when prominent planets within that antardasha you know eight months nine months one year mars mars mahadasha rahu antardasha however long that dasha is <clears throat> within that when you have sun mercury moon venus these four planets because these four planets are very fast moving when they are actually transiting in your second house or seventh house or eleventh house then the marriage can happen the event of wedding can happen that time, okay? But uh, if you do not consider the shas and you say, oh, yeah, yeah, my, you know, um, uh, Jupiter is transiting my second house, you know, you uh, will I get married? You know, people ask these questions. But for that, you have to first see your dashas, okay? So, of course, if large, uh, slow planets like Jupiter, Saturn, Rahu, Ketu, they are aspecting the 2nd, 7th, 11th or they are sitting in these houses and then the Dashas are favorable, then the probability of marriage is much higher because these planets stay for a considerable time, right? So then the probability is very higher. But even within that, so you are in Mars, Rahu, Dasha, Rahu is in the 2nd house and in, in your transit, in your transit, Jupiter is in your 11th house, okay? Excellent. And now even then you have to see like uh, you have to see sun, moon, uh, Mercury, Venus when they are transiting the 2nd, 7th or 11th. <clears throat> so those 25, 30 days, you know, like 30, 35 days when uh, these three, four planets will be transiting these houses. 2nd, 7th or 11th. So second house, you know, sun will stay for 30 days, Mercury, Venus around that. Uh, so uh, then 7, then 11. So when this transit is occurring, if the Antar Dasha does not change, then within this period, you can get married. So then you you know, okay, uh, now for the next 25 days, uh, let's say, you know, next 20 days, because Mercury's transit is maybe 20 days sometimes. So now you have Mars, Rahu, Dasha. Mars is neutral. Rahu is in the second house. Excellent. Jupiter is as in your 11th house. Super excellent. And your Mercury, uh, Sun, Mercury, Venus are in the seventh house in transit for 20 days. Let's assume like this. You know, Mercury is there for 20 days. <clears throat> now, what do you do? Now you take the moon because moon is moving even faster. In 27 days, it completes one zone, uh, the, the whole the system, right? All the 12 zodiacs. Now, when moon is also either in the 2nd, 7th or 11th, that is exactly the day your wedding can happen. Okay. So, so in short, dashas will tell you what is going to happen in life. And transits will tell you when it will happen. Now, you take an example. Imagine, you know, let's imagine a fancy scenario. You have like, you know, Jupiter, Saturn, Rahu, Ketu. Imagine you have all eight planets conjunct. 
in your 7000 transit okay in your transit not in your original birth chart no so let's assume you are taurus ascendant and let's assume ketu is in transiting in your first house let's assume and all other seven planets they are transiting in your seventh house let's assume no but now if your Mahadasha Antardasha is indicating some uh, career related work, so you are running, you know, Sun Mahadasha, well, Sun is in the 10th house. So now your Dasha is telling there will be some event related to your profession. So on the day when all the eight planets other than Ketu is in your 7th house, then it can happen that, you know, you are uh, going to some official get together, some official inauguration or some official party, official celebration or something like that but that does not mean you are going to get married just because seven eight planets are transiting in your seventh house because for marriage you have to have dashas of planets which are connected to second seventh or eleven but in your case the dashas are connected to the tenth house that is why marriage is not possible okay no, it, it, it's like uh, you take prime minister uh, Sri Narendra Modi's chart you know Indian prime minister's uh, chart so, if tomorrow, you know, all the eight planets except either Rahu or Ketu, they are transiting in the seventh house, will he get married? Maybe he may get, but for that, the Dashas has to support, right? If the Dasha is not supporting, then it doesn't matter how many planets are transiting or second, seventh, eleven, there is no marriage. Okay, so... Whenever you are seeing transit videos, you need to understand that whatever... I speak. So recently, I uh, like two days back, I made this video, you know, Rahu Ketu Transit. <clears throat> so many people, whenever I make that video or Jupiter Transit video, Saturn Transit video, there are a lot of views which I get. And many people ask, you know, I am this ascendant, this placement is there, that is there, this will, will this happen? Okay. Well, because why they are asking this? Because uh, they think, okay, Jupiter is aspecting my fifth house, so I will have children. No, it doesn't work like this. You have to have a Mahadasha or Antardasha for childbirth, you know, of the fifth house or the ninth house or the second house or the eleventh house, because these four houses they give children. Okay. <clears throat> and if you do not have that, uh, then it will not work. And similarly, if you have uh, Dashas of planets which are indicating the seventh house. And you have prominent planets transiting 12th house, you know, then you may go and uh, you, you may have a change of residence after wedding, your wedding, you know, or you may go and marry in a different place in a different country. That may be the situation. But to say that you have three, four planets in a 12th house and you will, you know, go abroad and do something there and not get married, even though your dasha is of the 7th house, is actually wrong okay so dasha will tell you what will happen in life and transits will tell you when it will happen so if you see qual qualitatively uh, dashas should be given almost 100 percent weightage okay or you could say 95 percent because they ultimately tell you what's going to happen in life and the worst part is or the bad part is it's not easy to read dashas because if you just read a dasha randomly oh i am running this dasha that dasha this will happen that will happen but you don't do the comprehensive analysis you don't see the overall chart then what happens you will not be able to measure the strength of the horse so for example if a person has a planet like you know sun is in the 10th house and sun dasha is active if all other planets are indicating that this person is headless and you know he has no goal in profession he is not interested to earn money he has no aim ambition you know he just drinks and he just sleeps <laughs> so even if sun is in the 10th house and sun mahadasha starts there will be some focus but it will be very 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 minuscule it will be very less you know it will it will it's like almost nothing it's like almost zero because all the other eight planets they are indicating the other side okay the other scenario but if the other planets are also indicating that the person has very good focus in profession, which you have to see from the original, the overall chart. And then Surya is in 10th house. Oh my God, this person may become a big politician or may get into IAS, IRS, IFS, you know, IPS, all this. You know. So therefore, 
you need to uh, actually see uh, the overall chart so first step one analyze the overall chart what are the planets telling you try to culminate everything number one then the shas the shas will tell you okay this is the person this is the strength of the person in profession career health blah 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 all these areas you know what is the limit of this person then number two the shas when will this person focus where and number three okay is focusing but when will he get the results okay so that the transits will tell you all right so i hope this clears all confusions and thank you very much for watching till the end and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who desperately is looking for answers related to dashas versus transits okay and if you're new then please subscribe to the channel and if you want a consultation my website is also down below god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will surely find him Thank you.